Hello, and welcome to Hey, Hi, Who Are You? The podcast that gets to know regular people that do cool things and explores everyday creativity. Today's guest is a really cool local fashion designer that also happens to be my very close friend, Bella Villianti. All right, well, welcome to my humble show. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks for having me. And we're both sporting Bella Villianti designs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like that you knew that this was mine. I didn't have to tell you. Well, I assumed. (laughs) That's why I wore it because I was like, you're probably going to be like, oh, did you make that? And if I didn't, then that would be be embarrassing. (laughs) You're like, no, I bought this from H&M, which is embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like completely against my ethos. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Well, I feel like you're the bardo top, like what you're wearing right now is sort of like your signature piece. So this was what I was telling you about. Um, a while ago that I tried to make it a square neckline, but like you can see literally when it's a square neckline, it's like, it's like the bottom though. of my boob is down there though. Oh. Like it's oh. not. Well, no, I guess no. you just need to make. So now it's off shoulder. You need to make the boob area like longer or something. So that's. Yeah, I never boob. thought I'd have that problem. <laughs> 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 it's like really flattering to yourself if you just make something too small and you're like, oh, Wow. Like, oh I didn't God. know. Or like if you buy a really big like pair of pants and you're like, these are so loose. I've lost yeah. weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, they're not your size. Um, well, how are you today? Um, I'm good. Yeah. We just did some custom work for somebody that we both know. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've had the kind of a busy day today, actually, which is nice because I don't have those anymore. So <laughs> that was refreshing. Got up and did a workout first thing in the morning, which is very nice. A very big feat. Yeah, um, in the morning, I'm usually like an evening workout person. Cause in the morning, I'm like basically just a coffee month. Same, <laughs> same. I know. I was actually gonna go. I was saying to my mom a few days ago. I'm like, I think I'm gonna become someone who goes on morning walks. Like right when I open my eyes, I'm just gonna get out of bed. And not even brush my hair. Step outside. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And just go for a walk. And that's how I'll start my day. And then well, this morning. Sleepwalking because you'll just still be in pajamas out the door. Yeah. Like, oh, that was. Girl. <laughs> yeah. That was yesterday. And then this morning I woke up and I was like, Fuck, how am I going to have a cup of coffee though? You can put it in a thermos. I, I can't. I can't drink and walk. (laughs) No, it's way too much. Too much. (laughs) And so I quickly, quickly kiboshed that plan. Well, I feel like trying to change your natural, like, night owl-ness. Not that you're a night owl per se, but I feel like it's like an owl trying to become a day day creature. I feel like you can't can't change your nature, you know? I know. It's really hard. (laughs) I really, really, really want to be a morning person. Me too. But I don't think it will ever happen. But I also really hate how much morning people are glorified. And yes, why and are they for better? Why? why? And w- yes, why are they better? And how is it somehow that they're more productive just because they woke up early? But I'm super yeah. proud while they're sleeping at night. Oh my god! When I'm sewing at midnight, I'm crazy. On fire! Like, oh know. yeah! Oh yeah! Like the potential of a needle going in my finger is very high because I'm like, (laughs) it's like pumping out a bunch of shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, No, like I I I have the best, like, well, maybe not the best, but some very good thoughts at 2 a.m. So yeah. And some not so good, but yeah. 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 I know. Yeah. I don't understand yeah, it. Right. No, actually, that is, I've never thought of that. They are totally glorified no. and they're always on a high horse, too. Oh, for sure. I for was sure. at 5 a.m. and you were still sleeping till 9. And I'm like, yeah, I know. but that doesn't mean anything. But you have to go to sleep at like 8 30. Yeah. Yeah. I know some people in my family that are morning people, <laughs> they message me at like 10. It always bothers me. Or if I get a phone call from someone, they're like, oh, did I wake you up? I'm like, <laughs> actually that's part of the reason why like i've scheduled my releases for my podcast saturday mornings so that i mm. have to wake up <laughs> i know you asked me today about recording at 9 30 or yesterday you did and i was like no this is you I don't, realized mm-hmm. your morning walks aren't gonna happen <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, actually, well, one place we can start that I actually don't know the answer to is um, oh. I've been asking a lot of people what their favorite movie is, but you don't really like movies. <laughs> I know. I laughed when you asked. I So I saw your questions and it was like, favorite book. And then you asked, um, Sadie, Sadie what's your favorite Jordy. movie? And Jordy. And I was like, oh, she definitely knows. Yes. I'm like, not. You do read a lot. Like, you are one of the people that I know that actually reads the most. Like, you always <gasps> have books on the go. And they're always interesting, like, yeah but and, like learning and stuff but I'm like honestly a bit of a book hoe like you know I I'm a bit of a starter but um well, that's some, okay. I don't it's finish that you finish the whole thing maybe you just learned something in the first half and then you were like damn this is good I don't even have to finish it <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um yeah my bookshelf definitely looks really impressive but I it's really hard to work through a book for me so but I get so excited about buying them I'm like my book taste has just gotten very very serious as I've gotten older like I used to read so many books like girl boss and like man repeller and like books about fashion and stuff but now I just read about really depressing things like the Harvey Weinstein book (laughs) yeah but that's a good book catch and kill if you I don't know if you're into getting angry about Harvey Weinstein, <laughs> read it. <laughs> probably good, like good information too. Like anyone working in an industry like that, like probably. Yeah. I mean, there it's are really, like, yeah. it's crazy. It was like really, really revealing just about, I don't know, successful people, I guess. Yeah. Um, powerful people like using their power in gross ways. Yeah. And I guess, like along that theme, Out of the Shadows by Tamiya Nagy. That was like probably the best book I've ever read in my life. It's um, about a woman who came from Hungary and basically, long story short, she got um, trapped, I guess. I don't know what the right word to use is, but she got tangled into human trafficking. Mm. Um, but it's a really, 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 really good book. Is it um, a true story? It is, yeah. Cool. Um, I think she actually lives somewhere around here, like ah, cool. fairly local. Um, but yeah, it's very, very eye-opening. And it's not like, it doesn't sensationalize the issue, which I think is really good. It just, it's a really good story of like how things in that area can just escalate you know, I don't know how to explain it, but it's oh, I know really good. Mean, like, I feel like a lot of like warnings or stories about human trafficking are like, oh my God, like they're just stealing all these like sex workers off the street yeah. and blah, blah, blah. But like, it can be a lot more nuanced. I feel like, like so nuanced, you, so you, gradual you hang out with these people and like, maybe they're a little sketchy, but you don't really like notice and like, you don't kind of ignore yeah. some red flags and then yeah, like it escalates. I can imagine like, it's like cults, <laughs> like yeah. cult, it sounds like, oh, you're in a cult. Oh, how did you not know you were in a cult? Well, it exactly. Something Everyone like that, that I've listened to who talks about cults, they're like, no, you could be a part of a cult. Like, yeah. you wouldn't even know it. You don't We're know all you just as vulnerable as each other. Yeah, well, because, you know? like, with, with, well, actually, human trafficking and cults, weirdly, are sort of connected in my mind. Mm-hmm. Where, like, you kind of, they are playing on whatever weakness you have, and then they're yeah. like, so maybe with a cult, it's like, oh, you feel really unloved. And then they like offer you like a community and a family. And they're like, mm-hmm. being kind to you. or with sex trafficking, maybe like you really do need money. And they're like, we'll help you like feed your children. And then you kind of get tangled up in this awful situation. Like I can picture yeah. it. I mean, I don't think that'll ever happen to me, but also like knock on wood. I mean, who knows? I know, it's literally my worst fear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, I yeah. mean, it's, not what I was expecting you to say, but also interesting. (laughs) I know. That's why I was like, it's not going to be a fun answer. Like Uh, you were doing that. um, What was it? It was, it's like an online training for honestly, like anyone in the public. It's just from the government of Ontario. Um, But it's basically just about like response to human trafficking. And like, if you encounter a trafficked person, like what to do and like getting to know the systems of, um, like rehabilitation for a survivor. Really, really interesting. I don't know. I find it 
interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm like, I've always thought it was really interesting when you just like jump into random stuff like that. Like when you're also just like learning Italian randomly. Like, I don't know. I feel like you're always learning, which is like, I feel like we bond over that. We like weirdly yeah. learn all sorts of random crap all the time. I know, 100%. <laughs> yeah. But I mean. But we both find it interesting, the things that we're learning about. So <laughs> yeah. like, I know that I can always go to you and be like, oh my God listen to this really random ass fact I learned today and you're like wow <laughs> <laughs> or like do you want to know how to say this word in um in Italian or whatever yeah like, you were speaking at the time <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. like when we got so enthusiastic about learning German and we did it for literally one hour <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> if you actually are inspired by like indigenous creators or anything kind of from talking about indigenous courses and whatever you've done but um mm -hmm. like your favorite designers and inspirations in general what would you say they are who they are or where do you find inspiration in general for creating? I think yeah. when I started making clothes <laughs> I make clothes by the way oh yeah true. Um, <laughs> you really, really describe what you do but we'll get yeah. it <laughs> um I would really really fixate on like a very specific designer and be like this is exactly what I want to do like I love this and this and this and this about them and I'm taking all of my inspiration from this one person and I would become obsessed but that kind of um, you in and then you kind of accidentally copy them without wanting to yeah yeah like so I don't know I don't I try not to follow stuff like that as much anymore yeah um actually I don't even try it's just kind of happened I feel like it's kind of exhausting like there's a fine line between being inspired by someone and then like idolizing them yeah you know and, then and you I just you're never good like enough that. because you're not them which you don't want to be them anyway you want to be yeah <laughs> exactly yeah so I mean I kind of just try to I don't know anything that I kind of have an inspiration to do I just honestly try it at least once and then if it's ugly I'm like okay this is not for me maybe or if I'm not inspired to keep trying to do it then move on to the next thing but talking about how the one time we were talking about that we both are like um we both like to be really good at something right away <laughs> and yeah if we're not you just drop it like so, like so to a fault well that's probably why I don't finish books and honestly, probably why I don't like movies very much, because I get so fucking bored. Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm on to the next thing. Next, um, thing next. <laughs> yeah. Why I like literally try to learn every single language for like a month. And then I'm like, eh. You're like, I'm struggling with six. the different tenses and I'm done with this now. I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My ego has been bruised and... <laughs> I'm moving on to the next thing now. Yeah, I love, 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 love vintage fashion. Um, I think my favorite eras are definitely, definitely 60s. Like the whole decade, you I love. You like, look like a model from the 60s. <laughs> I, I really wish. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and like late fifties, I really love, um, seventies. I love too. I feel like that like 25 year range is, if you I'm just obsessed with this. everything, like yeah. clothing, interiors, music, music. everything. Oh, yeah. Same. And movies mm -hmm. and oh yeah. True. Yeah. Everything. Yes. Agreed. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, actually, but then you weirdly, I feel like with your stuff, sometimes you throw a bit of grunge in there, which spices it up a little. Like, yeah, I'm confused all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it keeps it interesting. Like, I feel like you can always tell what you've made. Like, you have a certain style, but, like, it does kind of, like, have tendrils to it, which is good. I always feel really good when people say that because I don't feel like I have a style at all. Like, yeah. at all. <laughs> I'm just all over the place in my brain all the time I'll get so fixated on like a certain look just in my personal style not like really with what I make and then I find it will like slowly start to seep into the things I'm making and I'm like 
you're so inconsistent. <laughs> but I mean, you could kind of do like, I mean, I think you've done a really good job of doing different collections though, that sort of have a similar vibe. All these tops, like they were definitely like similar style, but like different Oh, by the way, everyone, the, she mm. repurposes things, and this is made out of an old bed linen, which is so fun. Um, this is, too. Oh! My mom found this amazing, um, like, comforter on Marketplace, and it had the prettiest, like, chiffon, where it hangs down the sides, but it's gathered. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know anyways, what called, but I know what you mean. Yeah. This fabric was what was underneath it, and it's, like, the prettiest it's kind of pale so yellow. It's a little bit, like, almost shiny. Yeah. But it's, it's so really lightweight, cool. so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I guess, yeah, like, I feel like with the inspiration thing, repurposing things is a huge piece of your inspiration, at least from my perspective, because, like, you're mm -hmm. constantly finding new places to find cool fabric and random patterns and textures and sequins and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like maybe that's also why I feel a little bit inconsistent because it's not like I order fabric wholesale or anything. Like I don't, I don't make big quantities of the same thing. So I really just go off of like whatever fabric I can find and what I like that week. So I yeah. guess it feels a little bit all over the place and it's not really it's not the most amazing business model. <laughs> it's a little bit inconvenient, like when I have to shoot pieces and make listings and market every single piece individually. Yeah. That's yeah. really it, annoying. But. Yeah, like it's, well, it's a really cool business model, but it does make it a lot of work to sell. Yeah, even one yeah. item. Like, I mean... Yeah well like we do photo shoots together and like yeah like literally spend an entire day which we don't have to we make it into an event <laughs> mm -hmm. but like mm -hmm. literally spend an entire day yeah photo shooting like 10 items yeah. and that's literally not even including the time to make the item or post yeah. the item or list the item on the website or like ship the item and exactly. like and no one's willing to pay an entire day's worth work worth of monies you know what I'm trying to say yeah uh, I ha I do so many jobs like you do so every many yeah. jobs just to like, if market you, one shirt if you were paying p other people to do the jobs that like a normal bigger company would do to sell that shirt like that shirt mm -hmm. would be freaking 140 dollars like it would yeah. be more like and it's and also I, unique which is another aspect like, yeah yeah, like no one I buy also, this. This is one of a kind. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> I feel like too people just get so used to pricing. Again, we're gonna get a little deep, but pricing of clothing that was made off the backs of people who are being paid like seven cents an hour. It's like yeah, this like, at like I don't know Shein or something would be like fifteen dollars. And people think that's the standard for clothing. Like, it's yeah. not. It shouldn't be. <laughs> no. It makes, like, <laughs> like, yeah, where do you think, like, where do you think all of that, like, money is, oh, anyway, I'm getting angry here now. I can't even make a sentence. I know. Yeah, I like, know. I feel like I've just been bitching since you. Since no. <laughs> no, but it's like, are there actual important topics where, like, I feel like a lot of, like, every small business owner as like, every time I hang out with you and your mom, like, every small business owner knows that, that that's, like, such a struggle yeah. about trying to make people understand where pricing comes in and where all the effort goes and, like, buying, oh, yeah, anyway. It's, uh, yeah, it's really crazy. If you are a small business owner getting started and you need to vent about how expensive it is to be a small business owner and welcome just yeah. Come dm us, us. yeah we'll have, to, we'll have a drinking chat <laughs> yeah. and get angry together <laughs> exactly i remember like i think we had a bit of a phase where you would come over and you me and my mom would just like sit and share that story <laughs> i probably shouldn't say yeah like i was gonna say just kind of tell stories of nightmare clients but but it's true. It's true. And sometimes you're, I love when your mom, I think this is the first person I ever heard say this. Your mom would say, sometimes you have to fire a client. Mm -hmm. And I never had heard that you before. Really do. And like, oh, that is so true. Like yeah. it goes both ways. Like you don't have to be your client's like bitch girl. Like you have, mm -hmm. you are a human and like 
if they don't value and you know what, more about your business than they do yeah and know? they're like you're caught co- you're you're like charging too much it's like oh so do you want to look at my accounting books and see where yes. I can lose some of this money because I or don't- would you like to attempt to sew a dress yeah then make it yourself please please you please make it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like yeah yeah, like, um, why I buy from you instead of making things is because I can't freaking make the things you make. So of course I'm going to pay forty dollars to make this thing because I because well, well number one I want to support you. Number two, yeah. I, number three I can't do it. So like, yeah, but yeah. Oh, my yeah. little sewing machine is sleeping in the back. Do you see her? Aww. All tucked in. I love it. Have you been sewing much? No. <laughs> No, that like you see the two little bags. Oh, wait, there on the yeah. Back. yeah, those are like probably the last thing I sewed like a few months ago. But whatever, someday I just I don't know how to sew anything not in a straight line. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to. But also, you can sew so many things using That's just true. straight lines. That's true. Like I wish that it wasn't a pandemic and we could just sew together, and I could yeah. be like, these are all the things that you trust me, you can do. Yeah, I just, like, I get, like, really frustrated really quick, like we were saying, with, like, needing yeah. to be good at something right away, and without having someone be there and, like, actually show me, because, like, yes, you can watch YouTube videos, but that's not the I same. hate that, though. It's not, like, they're, like, watch me, like, put this, this, blah, 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 and I'm, like. Yeah, it's, like, I don't understand I'm, this from a time lapse. And I'm, like, pausing it every two seconds, and also their sewing machine is different than mine, because mine's, like, super yeah. ancient. So I'm, like, I don't know what you're doing, and also they make it look way easier when, like, it's suddenly starts eating your fabric and they're like they're like oh like that's normal this is how you fix it and I'm like no it's ripping (laughs) yeah I know it's yeah it's a huge learning curve yeah oh actually that's a perfect segue of like you learned sewing from your mom right or just by yourself both um yeah a bit from my mom and my grandma like Mm -hmm. my grandma was a seamstress and like I think her first job was working in a garment factory like she's wow ever um so she's definitely the person that I call when I'm like I just made the biggest mistake on this garment like please help me what do I do um uh yeah but my mom also grew up sewing they always sewed their own clothes growing up because there's six of them so that's a lot of clothes to buy especially back then clothes were so much more expensive so it was and I think sewing wasn't as expensive back then as well. Like it's definitely got more pricey to make your own clothes. But anyways, no, it was more of a thing back then. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like yeah, my, so, mom, my mom and her and her mom both made like their custom clothes. all the Yeah. Time. And I think my mom's grandma too. Yeah. Like they were very yeah. much like, if you want this cool dress, well, make it. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Like, I've basically been sewing. I started sewing by hand when I was, like, honestly, like, probably six or seven. Um, I used to make so many dresses for my Barbies. <laughs> so many. I would make them, like, also bandage dresses out of black electrical tape. Nice. I made yeah. so many electrical tape dresses. Endless. <laughs> Making them... um. Um, like Kim Kardashian level of just like oh yeah one strip one strip for sure. <laughs> yeah it was it was strictly for Barbie clubbing yeah Barbie clubbing <laughs> yeah oh my god well we should make some electrical tape dresses I'm into it hmm. I feel like we came close to that when we took my curtain tie backs and just wrapped you up in them <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much yeah one step above electrical tape yeah <laughs> yeah and then Christmas lights around that. Yeah, yeah. It was basically like living out all of my Barbie dressing dreams, <laughs> wrapping you up in that. <laughs> oh my god, so funny. Um, I guess, well, but yeah. then you started like actually making real garments in like high school, which I remember mm-hmm. was really exciting. Well, because we became friends yeah. in grade nine, and I think, yeah, you started around then maybe grade 10, maybe? Yeah, like I had always, I had always kind of known how to sew, and it was always sort of a bit of a hobby same with like my sister sewed when she was a kid like that's just I don't know it was just really commonplace in our house um but I definitely definitely started sewing way more in high school 
Um, and specifically when I started doing online school, which was in grade 11. Yeah. Um, I just had so much time to sew all day. Like that's partly a reason why I wanted to do that. Um, so that I could just literally spend as many hours as possible learning how to sew because it does take so many hours to really like, you have to make so many mistakes. Yeah. And it takes so long to make so many mistakes. So. Yeah. Yeah. But then, yeah, you started making like actual garments and then our school was like, Hey, well, we have a fashion show. Do you want to do, do you want to show off your pieces? Which is super cool. Mm -hmm. Like, and you did it a couple of years in a row, right? I think just two. Um, Those pieces were so snazzy. I feel like you like totally let yourself just get super creative with those ones. Yeah. Because that was before I was really selling anything. So I was like, well, whatever. I'm just going to put like the craziest things out there. Cause I don't think anyone really knew that I sewed either. And I was also an online student. So it's not like I was like, even at school. It's just like randomly like, Hey, you're like, Hey, you guys don't know me, but I'm going to show yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I was definitely a lot more creative. Well, no, not a lot more creative, but more creative with like the clothes that I put out for other people to see. I'll still make myself really elaborate things, but. Well, it sucks that like you've had to kind of commercialize what you do. Cause like, I mean, it is your job Mm -hmm. now. Like that is what Mm -hmm. you actually do, which is awesome. And of course, like it makes sense to try and like make things people actually want, but that sucks because people probably do want your really funky things, but maybe less people want the funky things. Yeah. And it's hard just because you have to charge so much more for those things. Cause they're like like one-offs and for the things that I actually like, I'm so passionate about making, they would have to be so expensive. Like hundreds. And I just don't. Yeah. Um, so I do constantly feel like I'm watering myself down, which I don't like. And then this is just like really um a creative therapy session I feel like yeah well that's if that's what we need today that's what we need yeah um yeah but it's I don't I don't know what I was gonna say watering yourself I down thought because I was like wow you're getting really emotional no, but I think that's but that is also what I want on this podcast too is like with a lot of creative people I feel like it's like all about oh I'm so inspired and like blah 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 but there's actually a lot of I think with creative people specifically it's a lot of not depression but I mean yeah depression but like a lot of like, low moods a yeah, lot of like it's like is plateaus, this enough, I feel like is this what I want to do I'm not reaching my potential but like no mm-hmm. one wants my things when I make them really cool and it's like yeah. it's a constant like cycle of like what should I do is this good enough I'm not making money oh my god oh my god yeah it's yeah like, <laughs> Sometimes I almost feel like I would rather put things out that I don't love, which is not good. Like I shouldn't do that, but I almost feel like when I put things out that I really, really, really love and they're 100% me. It's risky. Like, it, it is riskier. It's like putting the inside of myself out there and asking people to pay money for it. Yeah, it's vulnerable. You know, like, it's like, hey, it is really vulnerable. you like this thing that I love, love, love. It's like, mm-hmm. well, yeah, it's like, putting out like I mean I can relate to like putting out a song or something and like this is how I exactly feel and if no one likes it well it's like awkward (laughs) but it it shouldn't have to be that way like but I think that's why you do get into these like creative ruts for me at least um I just got too into my head and too into thinking about what other people are thinking about what I'm producing and then it sucks too like having to promote yourself all the time like it just becomes I don't know it's a really weird cycle yeah I wish like well I think I think we both said this a long time ago and we say it all the time we're like we wish we could hire each other to do our yeah promotion which like we kind of already do but like we could like hire each other to do each other's promotion because promoting yourself is exhausting and like you don't know how to exhausting yourself in a new way and like not sound like you're trying to sell yourself all the time even though yes you are but like you want to also be authentic about it and yeah you are trying to sell yourself but it's not necessarily you like this is my job Mm -hmm. you know like if I don't post on social media I don't make money yeah 
it's you know, like that it's, simple. Yeah, it's it does true. feel really stupid sometimes when I'm like, oh, I have to spend all day taking photos of myself. And it's like, but that's yeah, your but, job. Yeah, but that's, that's part of it. But like, I don't know why I feel like I'm being super vain or like full of myself or anything. Like I know I don't feel any of those things, but it feels like that's what people people that I know at least not I don't really care what people on social media think but like especially people from older generations are like oh she's feel being all pr- like like yeah if you like, little fashion don't... thing and you're like no it's my job <laughs> yeah like they don't really understand that social media is I like, it's, <laughs> yeah yeah and okay. also <laughs> like I if you don't know me, like, I'm not saying that I'm an influencer. That's not what I mean at all. I just literally mean if I don't post about my products, people won't buy them. Like, well, they won't see them. Like, that's how you can, yeah. when you make a whole new line of tops, then that's how people see it. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Like, cause you're not getting random organic traffic to your website. I mean, maybe sometimes, but like, it's sometimes, hard, to- but it's really, really random if it happens. Like, yeah. And like, it, how do you compete with like, like if someone searches, like off the shoulder top unfortunately you're not going to be one of the top no, yeah. people who pops up so the only way that you can really sell is by making personal connections with people mm-hmm. who buy from you because like otherwise yes they are going to go to zara and buy the off the shoulder top from there because they don't know that they want to support you and what you stand yeah. for so you have yeah. to like constantly tell your story and be like i'm doing this and it's sustainable and you should like me because yeah. of this and you should like this top because of this and like that gets exhausting because it sounds like it you're floating into the abyss too <laughs> i know i'm trying to really think of a more it's hard i was gonna say like rinse and repeat but <laughs> that sounds too impersonal like it's it's hard because you i don't want to be really putting so much of myself out there online and like I know the whole trend these days is to be more vulnerable online and like huge long captions that tell your life story like I don't I'm not really that kind of person well and if that's not and, how you are then that's inauthentic to be authentic does that make any sense yeah okay. but then at the same time I don't want to just have this weird like shadow of a brand that people follow on Instagram and like don't really have a personal connection to you know yeah. so it's hard to find that in between point with social media. I think then this is totally just my opinion. You don't have to take it at take <laughs> it at face value, whatever. But I think a way that you can be connecting with people without being a long caption writer, blah, 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 mm-hmm. is like I really like when you share your like behind the scenes and like designing process. Like I think that yeah. is, like you can visually visually tell your story without having to write some crazy caption like you can show a series of photos like this is your sketch for an idea and this is your mood board and whatever and like I think that is connecting with people in a not weird caption life story way yeah that's so true I think you can do it in a different way and I really like yeah when you show your process and stuff I think that's kind of your brand of being open Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah totally no that does make sense like I do like doing that I just again like I don't want to annoy people you know no you're not annoying anyone like I I know (laughs) I don't even post enough in my books but I mean again I'm biased like I want to always hear from you but like (laughs) (laughs) but um yeah, no. Ugh. Well, but I mean, you can't really annoy people on Instagram. I feel like there's so much content on there that like you almost have to put out a lot for anyone you to do. see. You do. I know. Otherwise it gets swallowed up by, again, the abyss. I don't know why I'm using it. It seriously abyss. does. Like, <laughs> and I, I do have to remind myself, like, I'm the, one of the most nosy people on Instagram. Like, I love, I love going through people's Instagram Comments. stories. I want to know everything about your life. Like, yeah. I do. I don't know why, but I'm just like, oh, they got a new dog. Oh, wow. They're having a salad for lunch. Oh, oh they just so did like, this workout. Wow, I, that's cool. You feel that way. There's definitely other people that feel that way. I mean, I know a mm-hmm. lot of people that feel that way. Anyone ever. But I mean, I understand <laughs> also wanting to have boundaries, though. Like, you don't want to feel like you have to share <laughs> everything either. Yeah, but I feel like also part of it, like, when you're doing the same thing all the time, like it, I guess what I mean more is like, I feel like I'm talking about the same thing over and over and over again, which I am, 
but then you have to remind yourself like there's new people here that don't know me yeah you know yeah well I mean like we're in like when I do marketing for the freaking veggies on the farms mm-hmm. we work for like I feel that way too I'm like oh my god I'm writing about carrots again yeah. uh, <laughs> but it's yeah. like, but like every time you probably are teaching them something new or it's a different photo or maybe they haven't heard about carrots in a couple weeks, but to you, it feels Mm -hmm. like you just wrote about carrots. But like, I don't know. Yeah. Or there's new people like we get a new follower every once in a while and they haven't heard your thing. Or maybe last time they missed your post because again, the Instagram has so much going on. Anyway, I feel like we got on a rant there. (laughs) I feel like this whole thing is a rant and I'm sorry. (laughs) No, I think, I think like, I don't know. I feel like, again, like I said before, a lot of like small business stuff is like, oh, I started small and now I've grown and like only Mm -hmm. these few months and like it's all been such a whirlwind. And it's like, but it's not always like that. A lot of usually it's not. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And I feel like I'm just also because of the pandemic, like it does seriously feel like to me and my life, I'm living the same day over and over and over again and I'm just not I'm not in the most like honeymoon fairy tale place about having a business like yeah you know sometimes you're just not to have a business though like this is a weird ass like this is literally like great depression era of business time (laughs) and also if you weren't my best friend I like if I didn't know you well I would be speaking very differently and not being so candid but one of my things I wanted to ask you about was like you grew up with both of your parents having small businesses which is Mm -hmm. so cool I feel like most people have parents who have a very normal like nine to five job like a teacher or they work at wherever like a store or whatever and yeah both of your parents had like super unconventional jobs which I think like obviously had a huge impact on you I imagine because yeah for sure also chosen that path (laughs) yeah so uh my parents own a flower shop Um, and my dad is a musician and a photographer so just generally I was raised by two very very creative people Um, but then they're also business owners. Like I was thinking about this. We've been in business for almost 20 years, like crazy. Um, yeah. So having parents with that experience and we used to live in the same place that our retail location was. So I was honestly like in like small business slash retail slash entrepreneurship 24 seven since I, yeah, yeah, like all the time. Well, like um, literally, I would come over for a sleepover, and like literally, we would be based like we would sometimes hang out in the flower shop, like literally. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think it was also really, really beneficial because I had such a real grasp on what it's like to own a business. Like yeah, my parents like, not never sugarcoated anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very honest about everything, and obviously, I saw it all day to day. Um, so I, I don't know. I've always just thought that I wanted to own a business though. And I, I guess it sounds cliche to say it's in my blood, but, um, like you were never pushed to do a conventional job. Like, I feel like your parents were always very, oh, I was probably discouraged from yeah, being exactly. a conventional like, job. I, yeah. Which is like, that's cool. Like you were very much nurtured to do whatever the heck you want. Like, I think yeah. like it was yeah, like when you stayed home to learn from learn school from home just because you wanted to sew all the time and like you wanted mm-hmm. to do your own thing, your mom was like, okay, let's make it work, you know? Like, yeah. Which is really lucky. Like I think a lot mm-hmm. of kids would, like some kids would thrive that way. Maybe some need that like hard, fast like rules, but I think mm-hmm. for you it probably really helped. Yeah, it definitely did. Yeah. I mean, I was literally never going to school anyways. <laughs> I skipped like all my classes and I was a horrible, horrible student. So, which is I funny mean, because like you are super smart and like you do learn well, but I think maybe yeah, mm-hmm. just school wasn't the way to, yeah. Yeah. I think it's like that for so many people though. Like yeah. the system is just so linear and it just doesn't, work for everyone it can't work for everyone it can't work for everyone it like if you're gonna make it all one size fits all it's only gonna fit the one size <laughs> like mm-hmm. it's, yeah yeah I know I would watch all my friends like 
I mean, I feel like you always did superbly in school. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't try, which sounds really good. I know. No, I really but don't try. <laughs> yeah. But I would look at people like you and I'm like, I know she's not really trying that hard. Like, yes. I mean, we would be doing the same things on the weekends. Like, yeah, you know I'm that like, I'm like killing brain cells with rum every weekend. <laughs> literally, yeah. So I'm like, why the fuck am I the one that, are, that I'm failing? I can't even string a sentence together. I'm like, I'm so smart. <laughs> <laughs> SMRT. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but I was just so confused. Like, why am I not thriving in this environment? Which like, sucks. Like, you shouldn't feel that way at all. Like, yeah, like, I know from growing up with you, like, we had the same discussions about things and you had smart things to say about it. But yeah, like, it mm-hmm. really sucks that a lot of kids don't, like, they are made to feel stupid when they're really, yeah. really not, like, at 100%. All. I had way more teachers that made me feel stupid than I had made me feel smart, you know? Yeah. And I think that's so that just leaves a sour taste in your mouth about education, which I don't feel that way. I think education is amazing, but it definitely, definitely made me scared to um, apply for post-secondary. Yeah. Which like, I I mean, maybe you like, I mean, power to you that you didn't go. Cause like, I mean, a lot of people feel like they have to, but like, I think um, that really sucks that like you should have had that option open to you and you Mm -hmm. did, but like you probably did it like all in all, it was just a decision that I made that I didn't want to go because I didn't, I didn't want to pay thousands of dollars to learn what I was already doing. Like if I went for fashion, um, but that was also a factor. I was like, well, I'm not gonna spend this much money and continue failing. (laughs) Like, you know, <laughs> that would suck. Well, yeah, you're basically like putting your eggs in the wrong basket at that point because you're like, I know this system doesn't work for me, so why wouldn't I do my own way? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's very cool. Um, Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> I forget that you play guitar and sing and stuff and like you never do it. Do you not like doing it anymore? Um, I feel like, well... A, I don't play guitar. I did. And oh. I lost the skill majorly. <laughs> no, like, if you gave me a guitar, I could play a G. Okay. I could maybe finagle a C. <laughs> Not even the chord. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah. And I think I could do a D. Okay. That's, That's a it. song. That's a chord progression right there. It's a really, really cheery song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> But no, 100%, that skill has lost, it's gone from my brain. Maybe those um, brain cells, like, took a vacation. They're just... Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. Maybe they'll come back someday, though. They're, like, on Maybe. a long hiatus. <laughs> Maybe, but I also, there's just, like, my whole family is so naturally Musical. gifted with music, and there's, I mean, a few of my cousins would definitely agree with me, like, at some point you just like stop trying because you're like, oh, I'm not going to have perfect pitch like you. I'm not going to, like, I'm not a grade A piano like you. I'm not this, this, you know, like I can't, I can't just sit down at a piano and play like a million people in my family can. I'm like, I can't just like harmonize with everyone in the room. Like, I don't know if you are, if you are from a musical family, you probably understand I do understand. What I'm talking about. (laughs) I know you definitely do, yeah. Um, Anyways, my family's super musical. (laughs) They're all very talented. But I feel like with that, like, I totally uh, relate. Like, I was not good at piano lessons. I, like, I, like, did not excel in a very, like, Mm -hmm. legit musical way. But, like, I still really enjoy doing it. And, like, I feel like maybe you don't enjoy doing it, which is totally fair. But I feel like I'll just still, like write a shitty song because I feel like mm-hmm. it. I want to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love singing. I sing all the time, like all day long, but I don't, um, I don't know. It's, it was never something like instruments. I could never just like sit down and not have to try really, really hard. Yeah. And my dad would that. always say, he's like, you're not going to be like amazing overnight. Like you have to, you have to try really hard. And I was always just like, 
I feel like that's not true though. Like I feel like you didn't have to try. I feel like it just Ooh. came naturally to you, you know? No, I don't mean you. I mean my dad. Oh, I was like, <laughs> no. I was like, I don't know what you've heard. But... Oh, no, that's me talking to my dad. <laughs> yes, to your dad. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I know. There are some people who it literally is natural too. Like I Yeah. Like And it's really so annoying like... being around them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, but I mean, things come naturally to us too. Like if they mm-hmm. didn't clearly, we wouldn't do them as we said before. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the only things no. that I'm open about doing, I am amazing at. <laughs> if I wasn't, I would literally not, not tell anyone that I even tried. So that's why I only talk about like doing like three things. I'm kind of I, weirdly yeah. at the side of that though, where like I'll share something even if it's super shit because I'll be like, mm. I tried it and like, look at this thing that like, cause I'm not a perfectionist at all. So I'll be like, look at this shitty thing I made. And people are like, that's not the right way to do it. And I'm like, so <laughs> here it it's is. Like when, I, <laughs> when I sent you my knitting project, <laughs> I was like, I just have a bunch of squares, but I think it's going to be a cardigan. <laughs> Yeah, like, and I was like, you know, I can teach you how to... colors, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no. <laughs> You're like, I don't want to learn. I want to do it my way or not at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. Just randomly was thinking because I was looking in the background of both of our things and like, we're both such like thrift, like, <laughs> like thrifting fiends. Like you can see oh my, my like God, yeah. hair and like my weird thrifted like scale that I don't use. I just have it for a yeah. Period. And, um, yeah, I feel like, but I feel like thrifting is a lot more creative than people like, like, I feel like people who aren't at all creative are less likely to thrift. Like people are like, some people tell me like, wow, you're really good at thrifting. And I'm like, you realize it literally is that you just have to look at everything, right? It's just <laughs> shopping. Yeah, I know. It's, it's just not like, hard. You shop and you, like you pick hard. the things you like. Yeah. Or like people always say that, yeah, you're good at thrifting. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? I walked in the store and I grabbed this thing I liked and I paid for it and I left. Yeah. And like that's it. <laughs> like I think it's more just like a patience thing, maybe. Like we're both like, Oh, for like, sure. Some hunting. people some people don't like the hunt, but I do. Like I okay. get a serious rush. serious rush from like a thrifter's high. Yeah. 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 Like, whenever we talk on the phone, it's always like, do you want to see my newest finds? And it's yes. like, like the fashion show. <laughs> do you want to see the glass I got for 75 cents? And yeah. do you want to hear the very specific drink I'm going to drink it out of? And who will be at the table and what the whole setting will look Mario like? Yeah, is, I do. Yeah, like, this gown that I'm going to wear skating uh, after dinner in New York. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. are you doing that? No, but that's the No, same. but you got all that imagination for $20, so... Oh, twenty dollars would be expensive. That would be that would be a, a an I probably piece. <laughs> I it well, it was a skating gown, so that's not bad. No, but thrifting has also done the same thing to me as fast fashion, where like I don't like to spend a lot of money on clothes anymore because I know I can thrift them. So then I have yeah. to like re remember when I'm buying like handmade things or like from an mm-hmm. actual business that like it's not thrifting price. It's I know. Like, yeah. I was going to be like, yeah, I try to buy only things I need. And it's like one of the last things I bought was a literal tiny yellow hedgehog. Do I need that? Yeah. No. 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 But I love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's clothing. I'm like, okay, I can either buy this for $5 at the thrift store or I can make it. So then I don't actually ever end up buying things, like investing in things, it, which honestly – investing in something that I really love and that's sustainably made and I'm going to spend more on would honestly probably be worth the time that it would take me to make something like that. Yeah. You know, but I should just stop with this giant list of things that I have in my mind that I'm like, I want to make that. I want to make that. Oh, I want to make that. Oh, I'm going to make that. Okay. Can you hear the banging noises? Yeah. Is it it? or is your dad? It's my dad. I don't know what he's doing. I, Honestly, it could be anything. He's a big tinkerer, as you know, so it could be anything. Oh, it's I know. A real look into my daily life. Oh yeah. my god! Actually, side story for a second. When I was growing up, my dad would obviously have a full time job, so then he would come home around like six, sometimes even like as late as eight or whatever from work, mm-hmm. and he would always have like a construction job working at our on like working on something at our house. 
like yeah. we're always renovating because our house is so old so he would like always be fixing something or renovating but since he was at work so late he would start renovating at like 10 30 p.m on a school night of and he course. would do this every night so like and it would be that kind of banging all night and that, it would is, be like, that is the most like if somebody asked me to describe the environment of your house that would probably be it but not even because he's always doing construction when I'm there but just because like I I feel like he doesn't live on a real clock no he doesn't <laughs> at all like at all <laughs> just, he like or he'll randomly do yeah like the same thing with his workouts he'll like I'll hear jumping in the other room <laughs> at 1 a.m and then he like goes like, ah, 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 and then I know he's watching like a funny show while he's working out. And I'm like, oh my God, it's a work night. Can you stop? I love that. Yeah. I think just a li- since we're in the pandemic, especially, I feel like mental health is kind of like on the top of everyone's minds. And I mean, me and mm-hmm. you mental health all the time because I yeah. mean, we both have our stuff going on as everybody does. Yeah. But I guess, yeah, like how do you have any like things that really help with your mental health or like any... I don't know, tidbits, stories. We both kind of just had, like, really fucking crazy years. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Ugh, God. It, even, the, like, pandemic or not. Like, I mean, yeah. it's, all, it's all it's all attached. Like, you can't separate one from For the other. For sure. But, but, yeah, like, I weirdly feel like this year, which maybe you won't agree, but, like, I feel like this year has been the worst for mental health and yet the best for mental health. Well, no, that's exactly what I was um, – gonna get at saying I feel like this situation like generally speaking I'm probably like the saddest I've ever been in my life like uh, just being frank um sorry I'm laughing about the banging not what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> the banging is really distracting. you're sad <laughs> yeah oh no god la- I'm not laughing at that had the most anxiety and like catastrophic anxiety this year like pandemic and then political climate ooh, um just everything and then also basically doing the same thing every single day makes like, you feel like a hamster literally i don't i feel like i have nothing to keep my brain busy like today i feel so good because i've been going nonstop since i woke up Maybe like yesterday i I cleaned one of my windowsills out with a Q-tip. Like, I was that deep cleaning. That was one of the ways I kept myself busy yesterday. Woo! It's really exciting. Oh, but Um, I do relate, though. Like, that's why I've been, like, over-scheduling myself with, like, podcast recordings right now. Like, I really don't actually have time for this podcast, but I, like, literally am trying to fill every spare moment because otherwise, what am I – what I'm, like, watching Jeopardy for the 900th time? What I was going to say – um. Given all of that, I feel like I, I feel like I have the best grasp of my mental health lately. Yes. Like yes. not necessarily that it's in the best place it's ever been, but just that I feel like I'm really, really learning how to handle and to be aware of it. Handle it in a healthy way. And like labeling it is, does that make sense? Like mm-hmm. knowing why you're anxious is a big part of like helping anxiety. I feel like it's like, yeah. Oh, I'm not crazy. I just feel this way because blah, blah, blah. Or like mm-hmm. maybe today is just a bad day and that's okay. Like, I feel and like- just accept that. And like also giving yourself the like space or opportunity, whatever, if you're having a bad day, have a bad day, like totally. just take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Love yourself. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like it has been really nice where, like, it has kind of opened the door to, like, I feel like it's really not weird to reach out to anyone right now. Like, I feel like I could message someone Mm -hmm. from literally elementary school and it wouldn't be weird. Like, yeah, because everyone's kind of just, like. I think that it's kind of nice because it's the first time probably ever everyone is experiencing the same thing at the same time the same overall yeah thing you know yeah everyone's circumstances are so different obviously and a lot of people are struggling more than others but the issue the root issue is the same you know yeah well because like yeah like a lot of the time like the biggest life event 
like life events we can have is like death of a family member or like a breakup or like Mm -hmm. whatever happens like big life events it's very singular yeah and like it feels like the world is moving on without you thankfully right now yeah like probably feeling similarly for whatever reason because exactly yeah 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 so I think that's kind of comforting and I think it's also opened the conversation about mental health a lot more yeah because maybe also some people who haven't found they've struggled with their mental health before are now Mm -hmm. and it might be putting it into perspective for them being like oh oh I see what everyone was talking about about crippling anxiety before oh finally I believe it's a thing like you know yeah um I'm really grateful that I have my mom because like every day we have the most honest conversations like honestly to the point now where I'm like I don't know how we're going to be when we're allowed to socialize with other people again, because like, I feel like the question, like, how are you has become almost too honest. Like, that's so awesome that like, I mean, I know what you and your mom are like, but like, it's so like, mm-hmm. you guys are like literally like two peas in a pod. It's the best. <laughs> yeah. We're the same person, the exact same person. You're like, so I can come downstairs in the morning and be like, today fucking sucks. <laughs> She'll be like, I know. <laughs> And she won't be like, oh, but you have this and this to be thankful for and remember gratitude. She'll just be like, yeah. She'll be like, I "I know. Here's a glass of wine. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. It's perfect. No, it's the best. Coming up in your business, is there anything coming up that you want to like, oh, that's coming up new? No. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I guess you just had your rebrand, which is kind of new. Yeah. Um, mm, it's really hard right now to come up with new ideas because, again, I just feel like I'm in a weird hamster wheel, you know? Yeah, I know. You know, it, like, it feels really hard to make any, like, plans or promises right now, especially. Like, yeah. It's like, I don't want to commit to anything because I have no fucking clue what I'm going to feel like tomorrow or what I'm going to feel know. like a month from now. Like, I don't know. Oh, man. It's honestly, like, it's getting scarce up here. <laughs> <laughs> We really need to, like, we need to have a crafting day, like, immediately, because I feel that way. Oh, my God, yeah. I told myself that I would only sew projects for myself for the duration of lockdown, like, just give myself permission to do that. For the longest time, I felt so, I would almost feel guilty about wearing things that I made and, like, wearing them out somewhere, and people would always be like, oh, my God, that's so cute, or, like, you made that, oh, my gosh, can you make me one? And it's, like, you can say no. Yeah. Then I would always be like, oh yeah, sure. But it's like, this is mine. (laughs) I don't like, I don't want to do this again. Yeah. No, like it was maybe just like painting a painting. You don't want to paint the same painting again. Exactly. And like just giving yourself permission to be like, no, this is just for me. Like I'm just making this for myself to enjoy and I don't have to attach a dollar amount to everything I make. Like, yeah, that's exhausting. Totally. Like, personally, I feel, I mean, I think you have this too a little bit where it's like, I feel like I have to make everything a business because I can, like, because I know Mm -hmm. how to, it feels like I have to make everything somehow value based. But like, what if I want to make a random sweater with pom poms on it and no one wants to buy it or maybe people do want to buy it, but maybe I don't want to make 10 of them. Maybe I want to make the one (laughs) or like, I know everything that I make, like any creative hobby I have, instantly my brain mm-hmm. is calculating numbers. It's like, why yeah. am I doing this? I'm not going to sell this. Yeah. Or it's like, like I'll do a doodle be and them. I'm like, someone might like this. And it's like, but why? <laughs> yeah. Like, how much is a doodle? <laughs> it's like fine. This, like, businessman in my head. It's like, <laughs> yeah. like I know. Which is like clearly it's a good skill to have, but it's also like exhausting. You need to like turn it off. Yeah. Okay, well I guess yeah, we can sort of wrap it up, but I want um you to tell people where you can where they can find you if they want to follow along or maybe buy something from your shop or whatever. Yeah, so um www.bellavillianti.com. Oh it's not vigilante, <laughs> it's not Viglianti. <laughs> um v-i-g-l-i-a-n-t-i and i'm shop bella Villianti on instagram and bella Villianti on my personal instagram yeah if awesome. you feel like looking at my face <laughs> <laughs> which who wouldn't look at that face 
<laughs> well, thank you so much for being on here. And I'm so glad to get to share my favorite people with the world because I talk about you guys all the time, but they don't get to experience you firsthand. So you're yes. welcome, world. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> <you>. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to follow on Instagram and TikTok at heyhiwhoareyou.pod to stay up to date on new guests and new episodes.